Um, for those of you who are beginning, um, this is mainly to in response to COVID-19 um, to try and, you know, get your lungs healthier. So do some routine just to kind of, I might even do some stretching today. So anyway, inhale forward, exhale back. Inhale forward, exhale back. Inhale forward, exhale back. Inhale forward. Exhale the air out. And inhale, hold. And exhale. Okay, now this is... Um, it's called kumbhaka, so you can do any kind of breathing, I guess, but um, having the retention where you hold the breath in, that's why uh, I'm teaching this one, is that you wanna take those deep breaths and then hold. And exhale. Again, deep breath in. Hold. And exhale. Do another one. Hold. And exhale. Now again, you're going to feel a little bit of lightheadedness um, just from having so much oxygen going into your bloodstream. The idea is to breathe into the base of your lungs. Most people don't breathe that deep. And one of the things with this particular situation is that the, the health of your lungs is actually a, a really critical factor as to how well you uh, deal with this particular virus. Um, <clears throat> so we'll continue on. I'm actually gonna do some more flexion of the spine as well, just because uh, I feel like I'm from being, from sitting so much, from not being out, I'm sure many of you are experiencing this your lower back feels tight. My hands the other day, I was just like squeezing my hands to dry and I heard this like crackling sound. So um, this is gonna be a combination of practice, but I wanna teach a little bit about why you get, why your body gets stiff. Um, when you, so your body has um, muscle sheaths, the fascia. So usually a muscle will, you think of it as like a balloon, right? So inside the balloon is a muscle. The fascia is the balloon itself on the outside attaching at two points uh, to the bone, right? So that's where your, um, your tendon connects to a bone and that's what causes this, the lever action that lifts um, your, your arm or whatever, your leg. So when you uh, first go to sleep and you've been moving all day, your fascia is nice and like unbound. Everything feels more flexible, especially if you've ever like run on the beach or run around. So what, what'll happen is for some reason, when you sleep, this fascia kind of starts to grow and bind and, uh, and attach one muscle fascia to another. It's, it basically causes like a fuzz. Think of it as like a, think of it as a spider web, basically. When you first wake up in the morning, a lot of that stuff has kind of grown back and it gets tighter and tighter. And actually, they can, they can grow and get stronger when you don't stretch at all. Um, so when you start moving your muscles again, you start moving all of your limbs around which is why I might actually do some, I'm gonna do a little more physical stuff today. Um, that fascia gets all stretched back out. And uh, when it does, you end up feeling better. That's why uh, for people that start doing a lot of yoga and then they stop and they start feeling really bad, um, they say like, is this addictive? Why, why is this happening? It's partially because you're, you're, you're adapting back to someone that doesn't exercise, somebody that stays in bed all day long. Um, so going back to the reasons why we're gonna stretch, I wanna give some uh, little bit of hand exercises today as well. So we're gonna do, we're gonna start off with just some simple wrist rolls. I'm gonna to try to capture this. I can't really see how well this is um, captured, but I wanna, I'm gonna lower the phone a little bit more like this. And for those of you who play guitar, I see Stan's watching. What's up Stan, Ara? How's it going? Okay, so I'm gonna show you a couple of exercises for the hands. Now this is one, I'm gonna go real gentle um, this one I just call it like noodle grab, where you think of it as like you're grabbing a bunch of noodles in a 
pot or a pan, cold noodles, and you're lifting them up and you're dropping them down. Okay, so like that. And you can slam your hand down a little bit, but I'm not gonna slam really hard because um, this will warm up your wrists in a really good way. Um, a lot of us have been typing on the phone and probably typing on our computers. So again, it's just grip, right, down. Grip the floor, squeeze, flex your hand like this, and then down. Okay, grip, down, grip, down, grip, down. You can breathe deep here too. Okay, now again, wrist rolls. And then this is one of my favorite ones. And you have to be careful if you don't do these exercises ever. So just be really gentle the first time you do this. You're gonna just turn your hands like this and then turn them like this, okay? Now this doesn't look like much online. Like when you're watching this, you're probably like, you know, this, that doesn't do anything. You know, I've been saying this about yoga for years and years. If it doesn't work, I'm not gonna teach this stuff, man. You know, there is a lot of fake stuff out there snake oil and all that kind of crap but this stuff actually does what it says it does it stretches all the fibers that run down through your forearms again just go really easy because you can actually make yourself pretty sore by doing these uh, especially in the morning like it is right now so again now wrist rolls take a look at these so this is rolling through the joints from the metatarsal down all the way to the tips so your fingers okay so you want to get both sides again very light pressure um, I do have a video of this one the, the wrist section it's called yoga wrist therapy and hand exercises on my youtube channel you just type in earth power yoga and then it'll come up but basically you're rolling the fingers I don't know if you guys can see I'll give a side view rolling them yeah all the way through the joint light pressure it's not even a pound and then rolling them back okay so forward back forward through all the joints so if you play guitar bass joey altruda stan mark bashan louis metz these are all good exercises for you guys all right so again rolling through the joint all the way through Flip the hand over. Okay, so now I'm palm facing up. And then just kneading down. Now your hands will close, it's normal. I'm not, I'm not closing them on my own. As you push down on your forearm and knead down, your, your um, ligaments, your tendons are gonna pull, right? And it's gonna cause the hand to close. So don't freak out if that happens. Again, same thing here, getting this top and then down. Okay, so you now don't press too hard because you'll be sore from these. I, was, I know it's a weird thing that you're gonna be sore, but you will get sore from this. If you push with all the weight of your body on this, it's, it's extreme. Uh, so just go really light the first time. You could probably work up to it, um, but again, for your hands, especially these times, you know, these are the times if we ever are gonna need to be fit and well, it's gonna be times like these, and your hands especially, these are gonna become very important tools of survival for us. So, again, now I'm gonna go for another run because my hands um, have been really stiff lately. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure if it's from, um, be on the phone so much and typing or what I'm not I don't know but just being home and not being able to go out you know doing any like kite surfing or doing full class so I'm just back to like I'm so grateful I don't have to go to a gym I don't need weights and that kind of stuff right yoga is like one of those few activities where all you need is a floor you don't need special clothing you don't need to any kind of you know tights or whatever you can just simply do basic stuff you'll feel better i promise it'll also help not only make your body a little more flexible but it'll tighten up a few loose screws in your brain along the way hopefully all right 
Still waiting for that. Okay, now, again, shake the hands out. Something really basic. Again, very effective. I won't teach it unless it's not going to work. And then your specific, again, this goes out to my fellow musician friends. Um, again, really easy. Grip the thumb, pull back. Okay, again, other way. Less than a pound of pressure, I don't know. Six ounces, something like that. Okay, same thing here. Back. And down. Okay, hands. Push out. Notice I'm keeping my arm below the shoulder too. That's important. To, don't lift them over your shoulder because you could cause impingement in the shoulder joint. Grip. <clears throat> and then back to hands and knees. Now I know that, that my other Facebook video didn't come out so good because it kept rotating, asking for a vertical rotation. And uh, even though I started the app with it in horizontal, it didn't work. So I'm just gonna display like this. But I'm on hands and knees. I'm gonna flex the spine up and down. Again, these are off the cuff. These are just my workout before I go and do some other stuff that I have to do today um, around the house. But I'm just gonna exhale. Squeeze the belly in. Inhale. Exhale. You want to try and rotate, um, sorry, try and flex your spine all the way up through the mid spine. Squeeze your belly in. All the breath out. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, arch and contract. Inhale, forward. Now, if you can't do the full flexion, you could always just do the breathing with me. Just breathe deep. That's going to be more important. The breath. It's going to be critical for us. <coughs> Again, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. What's hard to teach is that when I'm squeezing up, I'm squeezing my stomach muscles in. And I'm also squeezing the root lock, which is the perineum and sexual organ muscles, tight as well. It's called a Kegel in the West. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze. Now, um, another thing too is that this helps for the internal organs because it gets all the blood moving again. And I know a lot of you have been sitting, if you're like me, when you know you're not working, you're sitting and your body's just stagnant, squeeze your belly, stretch and get those muscles all moving again in your lower back. Okay, they'll be a little tight right now. Like I said, the, the fascia is, is binding when you sit like that. That's why people that come out of a coma for long periods of time, they, can't, they can barely move and it's because of that. So again, you want to move every day, even if it's just a little bit with me or with, with Amy or any of the other people that are teaching online. Give a shout out to Amy Pafrath who's been teaching. Again, exhale. Now, I don't know if you guys can tell, but, uh, but I'm, I'm tighter than I normally am, way tighter. And I know it's from, it's from this sitting around all days, having all this time. Okay, again, I'm gonna lean back. I'm gonna reach the arm out in front, let the arm grip. My knees are uh, not totally bent at this point, and then I'm gonna slide back. So you get those side, what are called the latissimus dorsi muscles, get them to stretch out a little bit. I'm starting on my left side. So I'm kind of leaning a little bit to the right, but allowing the left hand to drag back. Okay, let the head and neck relax. And I'm, I'm talking to the, to the mic a little bit. Um, I'm hoping you guys can hear me. It's, it's hard to tell, but anyway, I'm just gonna keep teaching that. Again, right arm over, a little bit to the left side of the mat, left hand down, and I'm just gonna slide back again. Let that lateral muscle side stretch. Okay, you wanna decompress your spine. 
for every hour that you sit, do at least two minutes of, of yoga, okay, or stretching. You don't even have to call it yoga. I know a lot of my friends are, you know, against it, but look, I learned it through the uh, yoga tradition. So they, they are the ones who systematize this in East India, as far as we know, and it's, it's very effective. As popular it's become, of course, but I've been teaching this when it wasn't popular because as an athlete, I always knew how important these little techniques were. Okay, uh, now going from the upper body again, there's another really good stretch. I'm hoping you guys are warm. Uh, I don't know if I can say I'm totally warm yet, so I'm gonna do a little bit of, a, it's called wag the dog. So I know um, it's kind of a funny movement, but right shoulder forward, right hip back, left shoulder forward, left hip back. Okay, so you're basically wagging your body side to side. So you get your forward backward flexion and then your lateral flexion, right? You're going side to side. Pull, again, very gentle. Don't go hard on your body right now. Last thing you wanna do is pull muscles at this time and then have to go into a doctor's office because they're already busy enough. Again, inhale left, exhale right, flex. Get the side muscle stretch. You'll feel the fascia. The first time you do it, you'll feel really tight. As you keep moving, you'll start to feel that fascia start to get stretched. Now, there's a really good video, it's called the Fuzz Speech. I forget the guy's name right now, the doctor that he, he basically shows you. It's, if you type it in, I'm sure, I think his name was Neil something. And uh, it's called the Fuzz Speech. And it's all about fascia. Talks a lot about what I was talking about, the spider web and how they, how they bind together. <clears throat> Again, this isn't just, you know, my information or yoga terminology. It's all based, this stuff is based in just physical anatomy. Okay, now, right leg forward, I'm going to start by doing some simple um, stretches through. Again, I'm going to try not to flash anyone here. Uh, I tend to do yoga and whatever I wake up in the morning, I don't wear any special. I guess I wear Levi's mainly when I do yoga. Uh, these Levi's are pretty flexible. And, um, but you know, tights might not be a bad idea for some of you, or shorts. But again, I'm slowly working in. You'll notice that I'm, what I'm not doing in the morning is I'm not doing a lot of this just hold stretch, right? You'll notice there's a little bit of movement, right? So I'm still warming up the body. And I find movement flexibility is really good in the morning. If you're already warm, you've already been at the beach all day, then, uh, then it might make sense to, you know, hold and do like long stretches where you're just holding them. But in the morning, and especially right now where we're all sitting around on our butts all day, getting those stretches, getting your body moving again. <clears throat> again, I'm inhaling forward, exhaling back. Inhaling forward, exhale back. Although I'll admit, if you're wondering, yeah, I'm, I'm teaching more because... Um, you know, this is an instructional video, so I'm doing it more of a, uh, less of my personal exercise, because if I'm not teaching, I would just be going like this. And for many of you, that's not going to be very exciting. But if I'm talking about this stuff, explaining, like for instance, these muscles. Now, I, I talked a little bit yesterday, or day before yesterday, about, um, you know, some survival stuff. The critical muscles for um, having to, you know, what you might have to end up doing is walking great distances is going to be these muscles back here, your quads, your calf muscles, keeping them flexible, keeping them lubricated. The arm should be on the inside, technically. I think it's easier for most people, depending on your flexibility. If you're really flexible, you know, you can start to come all the way down. I'm actually still tight. This is literally my morning routine right now. So I'm just going really easy. I don't, even, I don't even know if I can touch my head to my ankle right now, which is a crying shame, but it is what it is. Now, yeah, a lot of people say, well, you're still getting older, you're still, yes. Yoga is not gonna stop you from aging. Um, but what it may do is it might help keep you a little more flexible and not experiencing some of the you know, extreme stiffness that, that other people experience. 
Yeah, so it would make it, you know, it's more of a treatment. There's no cure for getting old, but there's definitely different treatments that can help. This is one of them. It's one of the few that actually work. Yeah, switch. It's another one that, that really works, a hot bath, I find. Um, try to take one every day, you got time, or a hot shower. Uh, you know, that'll also help with your stress and maybe some of your, you know, anger, frustration is going on. I'm sure that we all have it. Um, times like these are unprecedented. We've never experienced this before. That, by its very nature, is uncomfortable. Um, again, now there's not a lot to this. I, I guess what I would say with this motion would be to um, just not push too far. Don't bend your knee too far out or turn your foot sideways. Just keep it going forward and back. Okay, slowly feeling and, and also feeling that fascia, feeling that that muscle release. Right? As you stretch, you start to feel that movement heat up and feel your body heat up and it becomes easier and easier to uh, to flex through. Right? Like now I'm starting to heat up. I can feel my lower back doesn't hurt, which normally it, it does hurt a little bit in the morning. Um, mainly and it's just from getting older. <clears throat> the reason I know is that I had some x-rays done recently and the doctor's like, your back is fine. He's like, actually, your, your, uh, your body, my body was like, um, you know, he said it was like 10 years prior to what it should look like. Like meaning um, my body is 10 years younger than it should be. Um, don't know if that's yoga or what, but that's what they said. So, you know, again, now you can start to increase. Like right now, I'm starting to feel like I can go flexible. I can go a little farther. You know, I do try to maintain, if I can, um, as much flexibility, like to be able to touch my forehead to the ground. That's sort of one of my uh, main markers for flexibility. There are some basic ones, like can you touch your toes when you're standing? Reach forward, touch your toes. It's a good marker for flexibility. When you're in a runner stretch, which is basically what this is, can you put your head on the ground? Right? That's probably a little more than it needs to be, but if you could, that would be good. Good for what? For why? So the reason why is sometimes when you're running and you slip or you're, you fall off, like for me, I ride motorcycles, road motorcycles for many years. You fall, sometimes you fall under high speed. Better that you fall all the way down and be able to collapse all the way down than to rip a bunch of muscles on the way down. Okay, so that's one reason why functional flexibility is there. Not so much for performance when you're climbing or something, although it does help for that. Okay, now another one's here. Again, <clears throat> keep your breath fluid. Feet together, knees apart. I'm gonna push forward. Now this is mainly, I'm just pushing forward because I don't want to, I don't want to lose my flexibility. I have a pretty good flexibility here. I can feel it is tighter these days. I'm just gonna lean forward, push the legs down, pick a focus point on the ground, and breathe. Again, feel the stretch on the inner thighs, you're gonna feel, um, maybe some of you'll feel your lower back. If you feel it in your lower back, that's common. Just let it, let it relax and just see if you can breathe and don't force it. Just find what works for your body at this time. Okay, I'm gonna turn my palms up. And then slowly walk your hands back in. Now the last one I'm gonna do is gonna be like a simple um, backward bend. Okay, so now my legs are gonna go straight back. You can't see them because they're off screen. I'm just gonna keep this vertical because I have this technical issue going on with the phone. And then the last one is I'm gonna lean, I'm gonna pull my body forward with a fulcrum of my elbows. I'm gonna like drag it forward, right? So I get the length of the spine. I'm gonna roll, let my belly touch the ground, and then let it grip and let my lower back keep all of this length here. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but lower back length. 
And then I'm just going to pull like this and keep that length. Okay, now as I start to feel a little more flexibility, I can start to like press up and do a very mild back bend. Okay, super simple. I'm not compressing the spine because I've been pulling into this pose. So I'm just pushing up enough so I don't feel compression, but I am getting a slight backward bend. Again, I'm moving. It's right now, it's more important, I think, for us to move than anything else. So I'm moving in these poses as much as possible. Okay, lift up, shoulders back, and down. Yeah, this isn't really upward dog. It's kind of closer to a cobra. Keep breathing. And then we're just gonna sit back. Okay, I'm gonna finish this one. And you guys could stay as long as you want, obviously. I'm gonna finish this one just sitting back on my heels. Um, if you grip here, this is kind of a nice thing to do is grip under your rib cage, lift up, and then fold over your legs and let that stretch your lower back. Okay, as so you're gonna feel that. And then let your head and neck relax down. Okay, so you can just kind of chill like that. Uh, thank you all for watching. I guess this wraps up my video for the day. Um, anyway, stay strong out there and uh, leave your comments. If you have any questions, feel free to leave some comments below. All right, peace.